The world's mightiest river, a home to the bizarre and the beautiful, an inland ocean that teems with life, a mysterious place that is home to more creatures than anywhere else on earth. Under this endless canopy, the epic story of life and death continues to unfold with each new discovery. Welcome to Amazonia. This strange wonderland is filled with riddles. Sea creatures thrive over a thousand kilometers inland. Giant species take on fantastic proportions in a parallel universe where birds can dive and fish fly. Deserts stretch beneath water. Trees wade through rivers and fruit is harvested by fish. Normal is turned inside out through the looking glass of Amazonia's water worlds. The Earth's mightiest river flows through the water worlds of Amazonia. Thousands of years ago, the Amazon flowed west to the Pacific. Now, it pours east, at least 10 times more powerful than the mighty Mississippi. Flowing for 6,000 kilometers, the Amazon forms in northwestern Brazil where the rivers Negro and Solimos clash. For a full 24 kilometers, their jostling waters refuse to mingle. Over 1,600 kilometers downstream, the Amazon empties a fifth of all the world's available fresh water out through a mouth over 300 kilometers wide into the Atlantic. It's a river of extremes. It rages and recedes. It gives life and takes it away. In early summer, dunes rise from shrunken channels. Here, deep in the interior, creatures with webbed feet walk the two worlds of water and land. Giant otters. The Amazon's rarest animals thrive only in the remotest parts of the jungle. A 
but almost two meters long, these giants weigh over three times more than other river otters and maintain their size by eating up to four kilos of food each day. This family has nine members and they all set out together to dine on all the dry season has to offer while staying near their holt or den. The family pause to survey their hunting grounds. Voracious hunters, the giant otters will catch mainly fish at this time of year when shoals concentrate in the receding channels. Lucky otter cubs born at the start of the dry season will grow up in a time of plenty. An astonishing variety of fish fill these waters. More species live here than anywhere else on Earth. Scientists estimate that hundreds more are still to be discovered. Among these fish, are surprising throwbacks to millions of years ago when the river ran west into the Pacific. As the rising Andes blocked its path, lakes formed, seagoing fish were trapped, and some adapted to life in fresh water. Like this stingray. Some of its nearest relatives still live on the other side of the mountains in the salt waters of the Pacific. The overcrowded waters of the dry season bring rich rewards for predators of all kinds. But in the clear backwaters, the giant otters reign supreme and have only a few natural predators. They hunt by sight. Their large eyes scan for prey as they power along upside down, giving them a better view of the riverbed. These tireless hunters have another secret weapon. Unlike humans, when otters dive, a thin membrane which protects their eyes allows them to see more clearly in the water. They can also close their nostrils and ears while they swim. They move quickly, holding their breath for only a minute or two. A reconnaissance dive reveals a glinting shoal of silver dollars. The otters team up to plunder the underwater treasure. Like synchronized swimmers, they drive the shoal towards the bank with well choreographed teamwork and timing. These water wolves hunt as a pack. Panicking the fish, the otters herd them into shallower water. The deadly combination of speed, agility and teamwork makes the giant otters formidable hunters. Like specialized work gloves, their webbed paws and powerful claws help them snare giant prey. Even at two meters, this eel is no match for a 30 kilo otter. It's easily carried off and eaten alive.
Although the family hunts as a pack, each member catches its own prey, unless it can beg or steal it from someone else. Fully grown animals seldom give up their food, but sometimes they'll share it with the youngsters, but only after they've had their fill. During times of plenty, everyone eventually eats, so for now, the cubs must wait. But they'll be able to hunt on their own in a few months' time. With their stomachs full, they adjourn to their favourite spot to rest and socialise. Giant otters use nine different vocalisations to communicate with each other and they spend most of their time together. So far, the parents have been doing all the hard work. After the morning's hunting, they're ready for a little relaxation. The mother gently asserts her right to her favourite place. Size does matter on this Sunday. For the otters, it doesn't seem to get any better than this. Time to sunbathe and plenty to eat. In the months to come, neither the living nor the fishing will be as easy. As the dry weather continues, water levels fall by up to 75%. Sandbanks sever tributaries. Predators feast on the fleeting bounty. For hunters like this Tucanare, the dry season means easy catches. The shoals can swim, but they cannot hide. Tucanare are the implacable assassins of the shallows and are one of the only fish in the Amazon that will stalk their prey relentlessly, just to swallow it whole in the end. It's not just the fish that take advantage of the easy targets. Normally a patient stalker of individual fish, the hesitant heron is distracted by the thrashing fish below. Panic-stricken fish churn the water into a boil as they flee from the relentless tucanari. Agile turns pick off the smaller fry and the heron moves in for the kill, capturing its prey with a rapid thrust of its bill and swallowing it whole. With so much to choose from, the muddled heron is overwhelmed. The terns and the tucanare keep up the constant chase as long as stocks last. There are almost as many different ways of hunting as there are hunters.
Beneath a few dead and nondescript leaves, the most voracious fish in the Amazon lurks. The technique is simple. It hasn't varied for millions of years. Here it is, slowed down 600%. A lightning strike. Blink and you'll miss it. But the red-bellied piranhas are not always in the mood for fish. In lazier moments, they may feast on insects, snails or plants. But don't be fooled, they are ferocious. They have been known to eat their own young. The heron hunts alone, above the water or below it. Predators that hunt by stealth cannot tolerate competition. Despite its indecision, the heron is no exception. It can't afford to have another bird frightening off its fish. But conflicts between predators is always dangerous and the results lethal. But one creature's misfortune is another's opportunity. Piranhas, the Amazon's most feared fish. Though most are harmless vegetarians, the red-bellied variety have earned their fierce reputation. These piranha don't even bother to kill their prey first. They just tear into it while it's still alive with their razor-sharp teeth, shredding flesh, feathers, fins and scales from bone in just seconds. The now placid surface conceals the killing fields below. Nowhere else on Earth have so many different species evolved to prey on one another. Every bit as deadly as the piranhas, but with a somewhat different reputation, are those clever carnivores, the river dolphins. Indigenous people believe that river dolphins have magical powers and can take on a human form so they can seduce women who live on the banks of the Amazon. These Tukuksi, or grey dolphins, live in groups of up to nine individuals. They are highly intelligent, gregarious and superb hunters. The ebb and flow of the floodwaters determines the Tukuksi's movements. When the waters rise, they enter the lakes and leave as the waters start to retreat to avoid being stranded. Nearby, the giant otters wait in growing agitation. One of the otters is missing. An alligator, a big cat, or an anaconda may have ambushed a cub. Finally, there's a reply. The careless youngster was busy feeding. The relieved otters reunite and eat together. This lake has been their home for the past two months, but it's disappearing fast. The search for food becomes more desperate. <laughs> the 
The pygmy kingfishers still find small fry to eat, but the full-size fish have disappeared. The once plentiful waters are now barren. The hungry family must move if they want to eat. Stragglers risk fatal attacks from jaguars, pumas and anacondas. Even back in the water, they're still not entirely safe. A well-camouflaged caiman takes note of their arrival. This new lake provides fresh opportunities for the hungry family. The caiman weighs his options. He will eat just about anything he can get his jaws on, living or dead. He'll also eat fish, birds or insects, but an otter cub would make a tasty and satisfying meal. The new hunting grounds soon pay dividends and the otters eat and play carelessly. The otters' latest catch consumes their attention. Their shouts and calls drown out the sounds of the approaching caiman. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. A persistent cub who begs a meal from a parent still has to protect his prize from the others. But fending off brothers and sisters leaves the youngster blind to the danger that threatens his life. This time, the two-meter caiman fails. But some caimans can grow up to six meters in length. Then, the outcome would be very different. show was created for you and your family to watch together. Welcome to Nacho Wild. The dry land drives back the water to its summer quarters. High noon in the Amazon, heat and humidity fill the air. In the heat, animals pant, look for salt, or make for the shade. A few weeks ago, the otter's favorite riverside platform of logs was awash. Now, it's bone dry. Some like the heat, but not if you're wrapped in fur. Annoying bot flies, ticks and mosquitoes plague the otters. The fish-filled shallows of the early dry season have vanished in the oppressive heat of late summer. 
in the deeper waters of the main channel. Another of the survivors from Amazonia's oceanic past is feeling the pressure of the long, dry season. The manatee, Amazonia's largest mammal, weighs in at over 450 kilos and reaches almost five meters in length. They are primarily vegetarians, but in the dry season, there are only a few aquatic plants left to eat. By shutting down all but the essential body functions, they can fast for weeks at a time during the dry season. The manatees bob slowly up and down, take breaths, and wait patiently for the tide to turn in the tug of war between land and water. The manatees are trapped in the last deep channels with the Boto dolphins, a larger cousin of the Tukuksi. The Botos bore their young earlier when fish were plentiful. Now fish are scarce and they too are feeling the pinch. Like all mammals, dolphins suckle their young. So the mother and her calf navigate the waters side by side so the calf can feed easily. It will stay with its mother until its first birthday. Each creature finds its own way to survive in these trying waters. Some even adopt the bizarre strategies. Meet the Mata Mata. It's not the prettiest of turtles, but in the waters of Amazonia, it's the master of disguise. But no matter how good your camouflage, when there's nothing to ambush, there's nothing to eat. And that means it's time to find new hunting grounds. Killer Tucanare have new business to attend to. By laying their eggs towards the end of the dry season, they increase the odds that other fish won't snack off their offspring and they jealously guard their nest, which holds up to 5,000 eggs. Their touching display of parental concern will be short-lived. The fry are just as likely to be eaten by their parents as by anything else. Tucanare are cannibals, and only 1% of their offspring will survive into adulthood. The chocolate cichlid, in contrast, seems to take a longer-term view and shepherds its tiny hatchlings to protect them from the many dangers of these risk-filled waters. But for sheer maternal devotion, the manatee should win a prize. During the female's long fast, she continues to feed her calf from breasts located beneath each flipper. By the end of the dry season, a mother can lose half her body weight that she built up in preparation for the dry season. Manatee's long wait is almost over. 
the rains return and water gains dominion over the land. The Amazon stretches its mighty arms to embrace the earth once again. Tripling in size and covering over 350,000 square kilometers. For the otters, the rising streams replenish the depleted fishing grounds. The kingfishers have full-sized fish again. But for the snipe and the blue ibis, the annual deluge will soon overwhelm the meadows that have been their haven for the past six months. Displaced, the migrants will be on their way. Over 3,000 kilometers to the west in the Andes, the seasonal snowmelt creates a force 12 times more powerful than the Mississippi. At the other end of the Amazon, 220,000 cubic meters of water rush into the ocean every second, and the river becomes so wide that ocean-going ships can navigate inland up to two-thirds the entire length of the river. For the family's inquisitive youngsters, the gateway opens to a whole new world. Many of their dry season holts have been submerged, and now it's time to find a new home. When they left this burrow, it was six meters above the water's edge. Now, they must re-excavate to build shelter from the continuing storms. To announce they have a new residence, they scent mark their territory with scent glands at the base of their tails and rub in the smell with their feet. The heavens gather their forces to produce a tremendous deluge, lasting not 40 days and 40 nights, but four long months of torrential rain. When the rains abate, the water levels rise unceasingly. Melted snow continues to descend from the distant Andes. The water swallows up kilometer after kilometer of rainforest, which will become flooded forests with new and different ecosystems in their own right, at least temporarily. As the waters advance throughout the forest, depths grow to over 15 meters. Flooding rejuvenates the soil by depositing precious alluvial silts. No habitat is untouched. Some are destroyed, others are reborn. All are transformed. By the end of the rains, 
the waterlands have become a vast, slow-moving lake, dotted with trees and broken by the half-flooded archipelagos. Though only a fraction of Amazonia, these flooded forests, or igapos, harbour an incredible diversity of aquatic life. Submerged for about half the year, trees where birds once perched become feeding grounds for fish. The treacherous haunts of the jaguar now offer safe passage to creatures of another stripe. The tables have turned. The hunted now evade the hunters. In the inundated forest, silt and vegetation reduce visibility, giving prey fish the critical edge over their predators. These opaque waters may be teeming, but finding prey is no longer easy. Neon tetras forage in the canopy. They're just one of many exotic species often captured for the world's aquariums. The giant otters follow shoals of fish into a maze of trunks. Among these disorienting barricades, the otter family could easily become separated. But their calls keep them in touch. Now, more than ever, cooperation within the family is the key to survival. Though living as a group is the giant otter's strength, their powerful family bond almost led to their extinction. In the past, if a hunter found one, he found the whole family. So these are now some of Amazonia's rarest mammals. This young female is ready to breed, but to find a mate, she must forsake the protection of her family. And if she's successful, she will start a new group with her mate. Only the stealthiest of caiman could take a whole family by surprise. There's strength in numbers, several pairs of eyes to keep watch. The floods engulf the forest for up to 10 kilometers from the main channels. The slow-moving backwaters and lagoons offer richer grazing for the manatees, who feed on submerged, floating and hanging vegetation. How these easy-going creatures find their way through the liquid labyrinth remains something of a mystery. Their simple brain structure doesn't hint at great intelligence. Their eyes are poorly developed but they can hear and taste fairly well. Underwater, their noses close to avoid drowning. Neither sight nor smell can be of much use. Yet, mysteriously, 
they are able to navigate. They rebuild their reserves during the high water season and must consume huge quantities of vegetation, as much as 150 kilos per day, 10% of their body weight. There's little time for anything other than eating. I'm holding on to their prey if it thrashed about in their mouths. The high waters change conditions below and above. The meadows have disappeared. The young female otter revisits one of last year's nurseries. Now it's a deep dive below the surface. Her biological clock is ticking. If she is to have cubs, she must abandon her family to start one of her own. She's poised between the benefits of breeding and the dangers of life on her own. She will risk attacks by anacondas, caimans, pumas or jaguars just so she can find a mate. No one knows what finally tips the balance and sends the young otter off into the unknown. Above the waterline, the earth sows the seeds of regeneration. The trees flower and bear fruit. Most tropical species rely on birds or mammals to spread their successors. Here in the flooded forest, the trees ally themselves with a motley force. Monkeys are messy eaters, but an army of over 200 different species of fish awaits each airdrop. They digest the fleshy parts of the fruit, but the seeds pass through their gut unharmed. When they emerge at the other end, the fish may be kilometers away from the parent trees. <coughs> <coughs> 